Welcome to Conversations with Entrepreneurs, a podcast by Africa Center, where we give Black Albertan entrepreneurs the opportunity to share their experiences of starting and doing business in Canada. The Africa Center is the largest pan-African non-profit organization in Western Canada that strives to create opportunities for full access and participation of all Albertans in all aspects of society. I am your host, Miriam Chimanga, creator and founder of Fuse In Who Am I, a broadcasting and media company based here in Edmonton, Alberta. Tonight, I am talking to the amazing Tavishar Moyo III from Royalty. <laughs> He's the founder and CEO of PCL Financial, um, a, a fintech company which is creating technological solutions. And he's going to talk about a lot about, you know, artificial intelligence and all that that you need to know about that. So welcome to uh, the show tonight, uh, Tavishar. Can you tell us more about yourself and about your career? Thank you very much, Miriam, for the uh, highly esteemed uh, introduction. I hope I can live up to it. <laughs> uh, yes, my name is Tavi Shuramoyo. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, PTSL Financial, a fintech company. Uh, we are actually working on uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and different algorithms uh, using blockchain to bring about uh, this technology that can help uh, the environment uh, and reduce the cost in as far as operations. Um, our organization, the root foundation of it is being an ESG. And the ESG really means it's uh, environmental, social, and the governance of the organization. So the framework is, uh, is a new approach really uh, to try and uh, be more inclusive in the governance uh, and social, to be more inclusive across the board, uh, to help elevate the marginalized people and also be the representative of the people we want to represent. Because people usually cannot see themselves achieving something if they do not see people who look like them. Mm -hmm. So that's where the governance is coming in. So starting from the top as a CEO, I'm making sure that I can represent people who look like me. And I've, I've, um, I've been in, uh, in, I have a proven uh, track record from, uh, for over 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, working in IT, marketing, sales. Uh, so I've covered quite a few industries. Before uh, starting PSL Financial, mm -hmm. I served uh, uh, as an IT uh, consultant with the government of Alberta. Mm -hmm. Sanco Energy, just to let to name a few, yes. helping them um, uh, develop, mm -hmm. implement, and uh, upgrade their systems on different projects. Uh, I also founded and managed uh, a real estate portfolio over a million dollars in the U.S. Uh, previous to that, I uh, co-founded, developed, and created a web hosting company in Virginia, uh, managing over 500 servers. Uh, before the dot-com bubble. Wow. Uh, uh, prior to that, I, uh, I also founded uh, Holex, uh, Holex Express Private Limited, uh, where I negotiated, generated over $30 million in contracts, tenders uh, with local governments and private organizations in Southern Africa. While I'm not managing the functions currently, of PSL because they're in development. Mm. Uh, I would love, <clears throat> uh, when I'm not doing that, I love to be more creative, um, uh, thinking outside the box, thinking of better solutions uh, of making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in this case, it's gonna be the financial uh, and uh, inequity and diversity governance that I want to bring mm -hmm. to help. So the fintech that I'm starting, starting off as a fintech, but really it's in the banking sector. Uh, hopefully we can get the license to officially be a black home bank. Wow. 
what an amazing resume <laughs> what an amazing resume and uh we celebrate you uh because this is uh uh february month of uh uh, all this Black History Month uh, celebrations, and uh, we celebrate your career uh, tonight, uh, Mr. Moyo. Now, we've dedicated this month and this program uh, to the Black History Month celebrations. We Tonight, we are reflecting on the Black businesses. We remember those who have gone before us, people like Oprah, uh, who have become the global icon and um, the FUBU CEO, have, of course, they've become the, and uh, maybe your name is going to be there as well. What are some of your reflections about Black History Month? Well, you mentioned Oprah first. Uh, <laughs> and when I'm talking to you, I feel honored, uh, hoping this is your Thank beginning you. of a new chapter to mm -hmm. be that Oprah in our community in Canada. So yes. uh, we look forward <laughs> to supporting you. Wow. you representing us on a on a national level so thank mm -hmm. you very much miriam for, for doing you. this uh so the first question you asked me what does uh what are their experiences and what are some of the reflections that you have about the black history month well um it is it is a very loaded statement to mm -hmm. be put and only remembered for one month out of 12. I know, eh? <laughs> Other communities are celebrated for 12 months. Yeah. And black people are only acknowledged for one month. So uh, that's my opinion, but uh, uh, maybe it's the beginning of something, but yeah. I think we should uh, be acknowledged right across uh, and not be given the crumbs of February, the shortest month of the month. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's very important, yeah, for sure, that we celebrate ourselves every day. And that's why we are saying, um, like, as a people, we have to celebrate each other um, uh, for everything that we do here. Now, I, I wanted to know, you've worked for uh, big companies, big corporations, and uh, you're an IT person. You've gone... Um, you know, way up there and beyond and you're doing much more. Um, artificial intelligence is something that is very new. And, uh, and I know, you know, a lot of people are just getting to know what it is. I know a friend of mine who's actually studying that. When did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur and not just an entrepreneur, um, such an, you know, um, a creator of something? Oh, that's a loaded question. Well, thank you. <laughs> very, uh, a very nice question uh, to, to make me reflect. Um, my entrepreneurship really started at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother uh, was an entrepreneur. She inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, she, when I was a kid, uh, she ran multiple businesses from being a street vendor market vendor, to dressmaking, to getting her um, pastry and bakery into big box stores wow. uh, it, 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 growing up. So seeing her manage to maneuver and move around circles with heads of state without a degree, a university degree, yeah. uh, just shows that being an entrepreneur does not need you to be a PhD in anything. The creativity uh, I think is within. So my childhood started off at uh, five years old, working for my mother, helping her maneuver her enterprise. Um, one time, a uh, quick story, she left me at, uh, at, the, at the market mm -hmm. um, to tend to her vegetables. And being five years old, uh, I hadn't conceptualized the idea of money and counting. Mm -hmm. When she came back, she realized that, you know, most of the stuff I had sold, but the money was missing. Uh, only to realize the people who were supposed to be watching over me sort of helped themselves to the money. Oh, wow. So from that tender age, uh, seeing the disappointment in my mother, yeah. uh, I started to, to, to understand money yeah. and wanted to make sure going forward. Mm -hmm was to create income mm -hmm. and save it. 
-hmm. because making it and just wasting it is another thing. So making it, saving it, and growing it. So that's where I started uh, as a childhood. My first business is six. Wow. You bring up a very good point in terms of, uh, you know, how we need to know about money management. What can you say about, you know, the... The, the resources that we have in the community, especially about money management, before we can even start getting into entrepreneurship? Yes, um, that's a very, very good question, I gotta say. Um, because money management, uh, it, really comes, it really comes to the core of everything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it starts from the education system. The education system was actually designed to create workers uh, that are submissive, more slave-like mm -hmm. type of thing. So uh, to be trained, to go with this curriculum, this is what you're going to study. The more you study, the, the more pennies they can add to your payroll, paycheck. Yeah. And you become so specialized to a point whereby you are now caught in the rat. Yeah. You cannot even transfer those skills because you're so specialized. I'm saying specialized in a sense that uh, a person like a doctor goes to school 10 plus years after their first degree mm -hmm. and they become specialized. There's nothing else they really can do out of any other industry because they are very specialized. Specialized, yes. So being an entrepreneur, it's not to specialize. That is where I am looking for very intelligent, very educated people to be part of my team. Me as the entrepreneur and CEO, I don't have to have depth in a lot of things, but I have to know a lot of different subject matters. Yes, yes. Very well said. Very well said. Um, from that point, what do you think the community uh, should do to effectively run businesses within our community? Oh, yes. Um, our community, um, I don't know, I, I get puzzled sometimes whether I should say the Black community or the African community. <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more comfortable saying the African community. Okay. Because uh, I'll tell you why I say this. We are the only people necessarily who are described by a color. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, pe Chinese people are, they are usually Chinese, yes. right? Uh, it's Indians are Indians, but for us, it's black. And we know that some Indians do look black. So are they Africans or are they Indians? Okay. So that's the confusion. So <laughs> as a community, as Africans, mm -hmm. um, it is important. Uh, there's a saying in South African, uh, which says Ubuntu. Yes. Uh, Ubuntu uh, is says, uh, I am because you yep. are, right? So uh, that if that we embody that Ubuntu unity and that unity statement, mm -hmm. that means we can actually mold each other, assist each other and build each other to elevate. There is not a single billionaire in the world that has ever gotten a without the help of others. Yes. We cannot be uh, a company of one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. the community is very critical. Firstly, the community has to be united. Well, actually, let me retract. Mm. The community has to identify itself first, know itself. Meaning uh, it doesn't matter what boundaries, if you go to Africa, what boundaries, geographic boundaries you're from, you are African. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if we're in Canada mm -hmm. and some of our brothers are from the Jamaicas, the Caribbeans, it doesn't matter. So all around the diaspora, when we say African, we should all be inclusive. I think the system has made it such that we are now identified as either African, Canadian African or African Canadian or African American in this in the context of trying to uh, minimize the African when you just say African it's almost like just being African is less than 
So they have to say African American. Then, oh, they are sort of graduated more than Africans. So that's the thing. We have to start with identity first. Identity is so important that uh, I look at communities that have actually been very successful in their endeavors, business, mm -hmm. networks. Uh, we can look at the East Indians. They are very good at this. They have done a very exceptional job. Mm -hmm. They can bring their communities from India anywhere in the world, and they can settle and thrive, passing any community they have come into. Same with the Jewish community. So uh, the root start is identity, mm -hmm. community. Then we can see some progress. But we cannot uh, try to create something if we are all unorganized and all have different identities. Very well said. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, identity is, is such a, a, a vital and very, very important thing for us to, uh, to discuss. How we are going to do that, that's another question uh, because, um, you know, Ubuntu, like coming together and doing uh, things together and making sure we listen and we are aware of of things. Uh, very well said, Mr. Moyo there. Do you know if there are about the resources available for black entrepreneurs um, out there or what is not there uh, for other black people to know, uh, black entrepreneurs? Well, um, interestingly, um, I moved to Canada in 2008, and it's been a challenge finding resources for black entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because they say, oh, we don't recognize race. So, you know, it's a challenge from the start. However, fast forward to the death of George Floyd seems to have uh, created some type of empathy, some type of uh, uh, consideration mm -hmm. to help the black community. Mm -hmm. So when the prime minister came up uh, and announced the 300 and something million dollars mm -hmm. uh, that they were going to distribute in the black community for black entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. I was excited mm -hmm. because at that point I was at the CASP starting my process yeah. of applying for bank loan. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be something that was going to be uh, helpful. So yeah, yeah, I've heard of uh, the, uh, the face coalition in their mm -hmm. fund uh, mm -hmm. but I don't know if uh, I'm, I understand they're probably more than that but I'm not sure uh, maybe you can share yeah um, and, and when you talk about the, the, the funding that was uh, announced by the federal government uh, there's, there's one I don't know if you've heard of uh, the ecosystem as well that was uh, a funding given to blacks, uh, which has ignited a lot of conversations in the community about entrepreneurship. Um, oh, okay. the, eco the ecosystem uh, that is given to most of the not-for-profit organization that qualify and uh, they've applied for capacity building uh, that they can help. Um, and Africa Center is one of them, uh, uh, which is uh, doing quite a bit in the community to try and, uh, you know, uh, grow small businesses and all that. Do you think that, I know you don't know so much about it, uh, do you think that um, uh, organizations that have benefited should collaborate to have one single understanding uh, for decision-making, learning, and education? Oh, wow. I think you bring a, you tie back to what I was actually talking about, Ubuntu, yes. the unity. Yes. Um, uh, I, let me give you a scenario of uh, even growing money as an example, and then I'll come to your answer. To your answer. Uh, if you take money and spread it to a hundred accounts mm -hmm. compared to putting all that money in one account and let it grow interest, Obviously, putting all your money into one basket, consolidating and let it grow in interest is a better way than spreading it around without direction. That's already disorder. So if there are so many organizations that are not moving in, in, in sync uh, and collaborating mm -hmm. on the same page, yeah. then we're already starting off on the wrong foot because there will be no direction. 
there will be too many heads. Uh, it's the same concept, obviously, back to our homeland, Africa, where you have 52 countries uh, and 52 or 54 presidents. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a disaster. That is why Africa cannot be the, uh, the, the, the global power that we need it to be. The global power that it should be, actually. Yes. Yeah. And it yes, must absolutely. be. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Um, I don't know, because uh, you are so accomplished. And now when I think about, you know, listening just to you, uh, listening, you know, about your career, what you're doing, and, and, and just really uh, going to be such an employer um, in this generation, um, do you have a mentor? Oh, that's the biggest hurdle <laughs> I've had. Um, even for my million dollar portfolio in the US, I never had a mentor. So all the businesses I've started, a mentor is something I was, I've always seen, mm -hmm. but uh, I've never gotten a mentor. Um, uh, so it's challenging to embark on something when you do not have somebody to look up to, somebody to ask, we do not have a black owned bank in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I cannot even approach anybody to say, uh, nudge, nudge, how do I figure this out? Can I get some support? There is none. So mentors are very important. And uh, it also comes back to that unity. I've approached a few people. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, uh, our own people sometimes tend, not, tend to be the most discouraging. Uh, one of our people once said to me, you will not get a bank approved in Canada being a black man. And not say by any other culture, but one of our own. Yeah. So that, that's the issue we have. Mm -hmm. People sometimes we look up to. Um, and sometimes people get into positions, once they reach certain positions in somebody else's company, they become too big headed, yeah. you not know, to realize that uh, you got to go and get if I'm still down, then here's a move anyway, regardless, yeah. right? So. Yeah. And and now talking about the bank, um, like really having such a, a financial institution, um, do you have to collaborate with other um, uh, black entrepreneurs or, or what do you do? Do you have to, you know, just be on your own to start that? Or how do you plan to do it? Well, currently I do have... Um, a banking consultant who has helped uh, uh, facilitate nine banks in the past. So he's working with me now mm -hmm. and to process my current application. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's not from our community, shall I say, to be transparent. Oh. So he's been, uh, he's an older gentleman and he's been helping me uh, mm -hmm. trying to figure things out. So um, that's where I am at the moment. Oh, very good, very good. I wish you all the best. Um, now, how do you how do you stay focused in the uh, in this realm of uh, the difficulty times that we face all the time as black entrepreneurs? How do you just stay so focused? Uh, uh, focus is always a challenge, mm -hmm. uh, and for me, uh, I use one routine. Firstly, that when I go to bed. I make sure I do not take my phone or any electronic devices. <laughs> when I'm in my room, there will be no TV. It's time to sleep. So that's my you focus. Just time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that I wake up a little earlier to try and retrieve my phone and see what's going on in a day. Because uh, just building those habits of uh, separating myself from electronics mm -hmm. uh, at night and getting a quiet, sound sleep uh, helps me during the daytime to focus without those little dings, dings, dings all night long, right? So, um, and having a routine and consistency usually becomes like nature. Do the same things every morning, have a routine mm -hmm. uh, of getting up early, do the same things. I get up in the morning. I try to, during the summertime, I walk about seven kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps me mentally, physically. Yeah. I feel yeah. good. Um, uh, during the winter time, I try to stay active in the house using my elliptical machine just to stay in shape. Mm -hmm. 
Then I also have time before that, after that, to try and uh, meditate, you know, uh, take 15 to 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. uh, clearing my mind, uh, praying, uh, planning my day, my thoughts, Mm -hmm. and uh, before I tackle anything. So I do those first few things before anything else, before I open an email or anything. Because once you start on these devices, usually uh, there's one thing after the other. So do the first things in the morning, have a routine. That helps me stay focused. Wow. I've learned a lot from you today and tonight. Um, Yeah, it's very important to stay focused, to have a routine, to be disciplined, I think. I guess that's what I get from you. And um, that's how come you can uh, achieve something. Now, where do you see your business in future? Well, for me... uh, the only way I see my business is uh, creating employment. Hmm. If I can create a hundred to a thousand jobs across the globe, yes, uh, creating a billion dollars organization is my vision. That's very good. Um, how do you? Um, in, in, in I know you are like you know you you talked about how you it's difficult for you in your position to ha- actually have the mentor. Um, but do you have people that you mentor yourself? Like, do you have people like look up to you and what advice uh, do you always give? I know you've given me advice to discipline myself and leave my phone. <laughs> I will leave my phone tonight. <laughs> well, uh, well, firstly, uh, I usually try to start from home from within the family, mm-hmm. uh, starting that small ecosystem. Uh, I have a 13 year old little boy here mm-hmm. uh, who thinks because I'm his father, he knows everything about technology more than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, with kids, yes, they do have advantages of things they might know, mm-hmm. but sometimes it is that delivery that uh, the wisdom is in the years I've lived. So I try to guide him to make sure he has also built the same routine of leaving his phone downstairs. Because whenever he has taken his phone upstairs, Mm -hmm. uh, he goes to bed very late and wakes up very groggy. But now he follows what I do. That simple routine of leaving a phone, disconnecting from devices an hour before going to bed. So I start at that small granular grassroots level. Oh, this was such a good conversation. I I wish we could just go on and on, but time is not with us. Um, Any thoughts about just, uh, you know, entrepreneurship and, you know, what can you say to someone who's starting um, just their business and thinking just having that process of starting or maybe they haven't started or they are procrastinating or something what can you say to them and you know what advice do you give them oh yeah uh so the first thing i would say get started immediately Mm -hmm. Uh, because the sooner you get started the more traction you build because there's never been a business that was founded perfectly Mm -hmm. with a blueprint, knowing that they're going to start from here and end up there. That's part of being an entrepreneur, trying to solve problems. So the sooner a young entrepreneur wants to start, get started, and you figure out things, and you might come across people who can help, mentor, and guide. So that's my best uh, advice. But at the same time, uh, there's this notion that uh, people feel they have to go to school, go to graduate school, go to business school. Business school cannot teach a person how to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I don't care whether it is Harvard, <laughs> Yale, Stanford, you know, so they can teach a person to be creative. So they can go and work for other companies and help that company be very successful. Yeah. So we, in, a, in our culture, black people are usually the most educated people, but the least who own anything. So that narrative has to change. Yes, you can go to school and do what you got to do. But ultimately, if you're going to school to be a doctor, stay in your lane, right? Uh, I say this to say, uh, you know, people are all over the place. When somebody's doing this, they also want to trend and go and do that. 
entrepreneurs need to be helped. And the best example of entrepreneur, I think I want to, I want to give it to China. Yes. Because China 30 years ago was a communist country going nowhere and they have created more billionaires in a short time. Yeah. And those billionaires didn't just have money fall off the trees. The government actually empowered them. Yes. So sometimes when these governments are not helping black entrepreneurs, they are actually doing disservice to their own economy hmm. because there's a perspective they are missing. Yes. Yes. Very profound. Wow. Wow. I will just sit here and listen to you, Mr. Moyo. Thank you so much for coming um, and happy Black History Month. I know we celebrate each other every day and I celebrate you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. This has been Conversations with Entrepreneurs, a podcast by Africa Center. You can find out all about them at africacenter.ca or by calling them at 780 780- Four five 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 four two three. Get in touch and discover all the programs they offer and start changing your life today. <laughs> <laughs>